Good morning. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the principles of patching, why we patch, what the reasons are behind it, how it helps your game, things like that. Okay then, well, first of all, Skyrim is awesome. We all know this. And if you're watching the video, you want to be able to make your game as good as possible. You want to make sure that all the mods you use work together as well as they possibly could. So let's start at the very beginning of the modding process. This is the creation kit. This is where most people come to to create their mods. It allows you to have a graphical interface for editing the game world itself. And if I... Let's go to Whiterun. And you can see what I mean. Ignore the errors. All right. This is the creation kit. This is what you see. I'm sure we all recognize this spot. Everybody does. There's Whiterun. And this allows you to quite literally just click and drag to move things wherever you want them, if you want to move them, or if you want to delete them, or if you just want to change its values or whatever, you can do it all directly through the creation kit. Problem is the creation kit's not perfect. <clears throat> if I click here with my left mouse button in order to move the camera around, I could accidentally twitch that piece of terrain there or a leaf or you know many things can happen but when you save creation kit put all puts all that data into an ESP or an ESM file and when you load up your game you have the mod index and the priority which is set by by using loot if you don't know about loot, have a look at the, uh, my references towards loot later on in the guide, or possibly earlier in the guide. But you have the game's load order. My game is very highly modded at the moment. And when the game loads, it will load according to the priority that's been set using loot. And it will literally just load one after the other just like a deck of cards. So first it loads the Skyrim ESM, then it loads the update ESM, then it loads the unofficial patches, then the Dawnguard, and so on and so on and so on, all the way down here, everything that's ticked one after another, they get loaded and stacked on top of the previous set of, the previous set of ESPs. Thing is though, mods that get loaded second or third or fourth, the mods that get loaded later overwrite anything that is in the list beforehand. And this means that you can have inconsistencies. Inconsistencies are obviously not good. So in order to find out what the problem is we need to use this program called Tezedit. Now I've loaded up my entire mod list here on the left hand side so for now just ignore that we're just going to concentrate on Skyrim itself. This here is a list of all the raw data inside everything. So in the standard Skyrim game itself, the vanilla game, the action for left hand attack has this set of instructions. And again in the standard game this cell here has all of this data. Unofficial patches has all of that data. Cutting room floor has all of that data. Uh, enhanced lights and effects has all of that data, etc. etc. So on so on and so on and so forth. And as I say, this means that when you load up the game, the last loaded ESM or ESP wins the argument. So what am I talking about with the arguments? 
well, as I showed you here, the game will load the Skyrim ASM first, which has the colour settings down here, the fog, the lighting, all the ambient effects for that specific cell, which is actually Nightingale Hall. But the unofficial patches say they should be a slightly different way. So they load up afterwards with their set of settings. But you see here at the end, ELE Light Merged has actually got a few values which are completely different. This means when you load the game, in the vanilla Skyrim, you will have these settings. But because you modded it, you'll be using these settings because this one loads last. Now, when you get to different areas, things like NPCs, weapons, armors, uh, weathers, you get lots of little inconsistencies with your different mods. Because if you've got wet and cold, loads up last and tells your game that all your NPCs need to wear a hood when it rains. But if you've got a mod that changes the weather, completely changes the weather, for example, wet and cold will be saying during this weather cycle you need to use a hood because it's raining. But your other mod says, no, that weather shouldn't be. So when you go into the game, they don't fit properly. Uh, the best way I can... I have created a wonderful little PowerPoint presentation to try and help you visualize that. So in this example, I'm just going to use the Skyrim ES. Uh, we've got Skyrim, Dawnguard, Halffires, Dragonborn, the unofficial patches, Percus Maximus, and Wet and Cold. And then over the top of all of those, you'll have your own custom patch, which you will eventually learn to create. Right, down on the left hand side here we've got the, the list of values within the game that I showed you in, in Tez Edit. So you've got all the quest items, uh, all the creature settings, combat settings, weather, the game settings, dialogue, terrain, floor, NPCs, armor, weapons, light, and in, internal cells. Now, in your standard vanilla game <coughs> that just contains Skyrim, you will have this. You will have all the interior cell settings in Skyrim, all of the weapon settings in Skyrim, all of Skyrim settings for the flora, Skyrim settings for the weather, Skyrim settings for the creatures and the quests. But then you, but then the game loads up Dawnguard afterwards. But Dawnguard doesn't change every single setting in the game. Dawnguard only changes the settings that apply to it. So, in this example I've created. Dawn Guard is changing some of the interior, it makes changes to the interior cells, it doesn't touch the lighting, but it makes changes to the weapons. So now Skyrim ignores all of these settings and loads up these ones instead. And then you have Half Fire on top of that. Half Fire changing its own set of, its own set of uh, values within the game. Then you put Dragonborn on top. all of the unofficial patches, which, by the way, if you're not using them, stop playing the game. You need to use the unofficial patches. But now, on all of these here, the unofficial patches have changed all of these values. So in, in, the, in the combat settings for the game, Skyrim has its set, Dawnguard has, it, has its changes that it's made, but then Dragonborn came along and made its, its changes. And then the unofficial patches load up afterwards, and you've got their changes. Then you, then you throw perma on top of that. And then you throw wet and cold on top. So now, uh, down here at the bottom, let's have a look at the interior cells as an example. In Skyrim, you've got the standard interior cells that don't touch anything. <clears throat> but then you have Dawn Guards. Dawn Guards changes add some new NPCs to the interior cells, change where some furniture's laying, you know, tweak a few lighting values, things like that. But then Dragonborn loads up and all the changes that Dragonborn has made overwrite the changes for Dawnguard and the changes for Skyrim. The game only sees these settings. But then the unofficial patches have done the same and Perma. So now, when you load up your game, you will only see Perma's changes to interior cells wet and cold changes to lighting, unofficial patches changing to weapons, all of the rest of these changes in all of these mods are getting completely missed because they're overwritten. 
So you need to create a custom patch. Think of your custom patch as a merged copy of the changes. So you take all the changes from Dawn Guards that need to be that need to be done, and all the changes from Dragonborn that need to be done, all the changes from unofficial patches, and all the changes from Perma, and you mix them into your own custom ESP for that particular cell. And the same same goes for any of these. The same goes for the flora. You'll have your own custom patch that sits on top that contains the changed values from each individual mod into one merged mod. This is very handy for things like like I say, weapons, armors, uh, sometimes uh, scripts as well, and things like that. Just anything that is that is referenced by the ESP. They all need to be blended together, so you have the changes from each one in your own little custom ESP. Then the game loads up and sees everything that you have told it to see. Now, if we just go back to Tez Edit now, I can show you. A perfect example of that and I'll just do a quick one so we can see exactly what I mean. I'm going to use outfits as an example because I know there's lots in there. So right, you can see that all these ones that have got the red mark are obviously got some problems going on that we need to fix. So uh, let's choose bandit armor melee no shield outfit. This means that when a bandit, when the game loads a bandit in a cell or any any place, it the game looks to this list here to see what outfit that specific NPC should be given. So you can see that Skyrim says that a bandit armor, bandit armor, who is melee that doesn't use a shield, should be using something from the bandit cuirass list, something from the bandit boots list, and something from the bandit gauntlets list. But then complete crafting comes along and says, yeah, you should use all of those, but you should also use something from the uh, the bandit bandoliers list. But Obis has its own choices. And Obis says, no, no, ignore everything, use my list. But then Cloaks comes along and says, no, no, you shouldn't use that list, you need to be using the vanilla list, plus the bandoliers, and something from this cloaks. Then you got Winter is Coming cloaks that does its own version of that. And then at the very end, the last one that the game sees comes from the talks. It's a little mod that adds uh, an extra necklace, basically, for, that you can use for enchanting and stuff like that. But now the game's been told, ignore everything over there, just use this lot of settings. So what we need to do is create an entirely new mod. Just an ESP that only contains this item here, only contains this outfit list and the settings that we're going to give it. So if we start with talks, copy as override into new file. And we're going to call it whatever you want myself I'm gonna call it CP for custom patch and then outfits override now it's just saying we need because because you're using this item here which cre which was created by talks in your ASP do you want to allow talks to be a master yes that's not a problem because that's exactly what we actually want now in this example I'm going to use Obis for the main armor which means we just simply click and drag yes we want to add Obis as a master so we can use its references and we need to remove these three because in Obis Obis says use the armor from this list so we put that in there and ignore the three standard vanilla ones so now in our custom override we've now blended the Obis sayings with the talk settings but that's not quite it because we still have cloaks that are being changed from two separate mods and we also have the bandoliers that are being added by complete crafting so if we 
copy the bandoliers over and then at this point I have to make a choice what would I rather see bandits wearing cloaks from winter is coming the big heavy furry ones or standard little cloaks personally I'd say bandits are going to be more likely to be using big cloaks made from wolf skins and things they're bandits they live in the woods so we take that and we drag it over yes we want to add cloaks as masters but we don't want the helmet because, if you remember, we're taking all of the armor, the entire armor that this person's going to wear is coming from the Obis selection. Obviously, a helmet's part of the armor. We don't want to do that because that's going to cock up the Obis settings. So now, what we have is one ESP that we've created ourselves that now contains everything that we need. It contains the changes made by Complete Crafting, the one Dr. Ban Bandit Bandoliers. We have the changes made by Obis. We've removed the vanilla settings for what they should be wearing and used the settings from Obis to decide what they're wearing. And we made a choice that we want to use the changes made by Winter is Coming and added those in there. So now Whenever we load the game up and we come across a bandit who's going to be using this setting, the bandit will load up with armor from Obis, a cloak from Winter is Coming, and a torque, and possibly a bandolier. It's that simple. I will be creating a video to show people exactly how I patch my entire game, which does take a long time, so please bear with it. But for now, that's basically all it is. TezEdit allows you to see the raw data created by the creation kit in the mods. And to save, all you do is click exit, make sure that it's ticked, click OK, and then in your overwrite mod is the ESP that we just created. It's only a tiny one, it's only got 342 bytes, but that's because it only contains one record. But that is why we patch. That is the basic principles of patching through TezEdit. Thank you very much.